The situation with respect to belligerent occupation is more complex. Depending on which treaties states are party to, they may be subject to two different rules. One stating that the law of occupation ceases a year after the conclusion of hostilities, and a second stating that the law of occupation ceases when the occupation itself comes to an end. However, it may be that states that are subject to the first rule through conventional law are in fact bound by the second according to custom. The rule stating that the law of occupation ceases to have effect a single year after the fighting has ended is established by the fourth Geneva Convention. According to the third clause of Article 6 of the Convention, the law of occupation ceases one year after the general clause of military operations, except some provisions of the conventions listed in that article. Historical reasons explain this one-year limit. This was made to enable the victors of the Second World War, which occupied Germany and Japan, to have a free hand to modify the institutional regime of those states, and therefore to depart from the law of occupation, which normally requires the status quo to be maintained in the occupied territory. However, Article 6 was a departure from existing rules and there has been a concerted effort to overturn it in favour of a rule based on the factual occurrence of occupation. Indeed, according to Article 42 of the 1907 Hague Regulations, occupation normally exists when a state effectively controls the territory of another state without that state's consent. Any loss of control should therefore mean that the law of occupation ceases to apply. This position has been restored under Additional Protocol 1, which dropped the one-year limit from the fourth Geneva Convention. Article 3b of Additional Protocol 1 indeed provides that the application of the conventions and of this protocol shall cease in the case of occupied territories on the termination of the occupation. Of course, except regarding the protection afforded to persons detained in relation to the conflict, which remains applicable until release, repatriation or re-establishment of those persons. There are several ways through which states may lose effective control over the territory of another state. Unilateral withdrawal, defeat of the occupying power by the military forces of the occupied state, resumption of hostilities in the occupied territories, etc. In any case, such a loss of control must be general. It must concern the greater part of the, of the occupied territory and not merely isolated areas and it must meet some degree of permanence, which means be uninterrupted for a time and not just sporadic incidents. It is clear that the threshold provided under Additional Protocol 1 replaced that of the fourth Geneva Convention for states having ratified the protocol. However, there are diverging views as to whether it is also applicable to states that are not party to the protocol as part of customary law. Some elements plead in favour of this view, such as that some of states that took part in the negotiations regarding Additional Protocol 1 but did not accede to it, have advocated for the prolongation of the law of occupation as far as possible. However, the case law of the International Court of Justice, in particular its advisory opinion in the war case, and some state declarations suggest that Article 6 of the Fourth Geneva Convention is still applicable for states not party to Additional Protocol 1. 